We're delighted this morning to welcome as our guest speaker, Swami Yogatmananda, a senior monk of the Ramakrishna order, which he joined in 1976. Since 2001, he served in his present capacity as minister of the Vedanta Society of Providence, Rhode Island. He is also the Hindu religious affiliate at Brown University, Providence, and the Hindu chaplain at the University of Massachusetts in Dartmouth. He is a dear and good friend of this society and well known to many of us. He will talk this morning on Sri Ramakrishna in Bhava Mukha. Om Sthapakaya Chadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishthaya Ramakrishna Yate Namaha Salutations to you, O Sri Ramakrishna, who are the embodiment of all religions and has appeared in this world to establish religion and who is the highest, best among the incarnations of God. Dear friends, this is the first time that I have come to speak from this podium after the demise of beloved revered Tathagatanandaji. And uh, I am very thankful to Sarvapriyananda uh, and all the devotees here for not only extending uh, an invitation but also providing me with wonderful hospitality. So, uh, it is. It has always been a feature of this center that I like. Uh, that is an informal sense of love and affinity. Uh, and therefore, I see that it is still uh, as intact as I came here first uh, in a few days after my arrival in U.S. I had the blessed opportunity to come here and a few of the friends that I met for the first time are, uh, I had the chance to meet them yesterday too. So, uh, with this, uh, let us turn towards today's uh, uh, topic, uh, which is very important for the practical students of Vedanta, or let us put it, students of practical Vedanta, who want to practicalize, uh, who want to implement the ideas, principles of Vedanta into their day-to-day -day, uh, life and experience those things. As you all know, Swami Vivekananda maintained that religion is realization. One has to experience, realize these truths. So. Uh, for this, uh, I find this topic to be very, very useful. Sri Ramakrishna in Bhava Mukha. So be before I actually begin, let us uh, close our eyes and think of our true identity. Let us dissociate ourselves for the time being, from our all temporal identities, like I am this body, I am this mind, and so forth. And let us concentrate on our essential, eternal identity, our true self. at this true identity of ours. I see I am all-pervading. 
I am ever free beyond the limits of time and space. I am one without second. This is the goal of life, to realize this. Let us open our eyes and try to feel this idea with open eyes. That is what we thought about with the closed eyes. Uh, let us try to feel that with open eyes. Uh, like Madame Tosho's museum, you know, wax museum. Uh, whether you uh, think with closed eyes, without looking at the forms, different uh, shapes, uh, whether it is uh, Churchill or Picasso, doesn't matter. Mm. It is uh, with closed eyes, you see that all is same wax. But with open eyes, does the truth change? Uh, they still are all wax. Mm. So let us be aware that everybody is actually that true, all-pervading self shaped uh, differently, that's all. Mm, that, that very truth, when shaped in one way, uh, then it gets called Diane, uh, shaped in a different way, uh, that gets called Patrick, uh, shaped in another way, that gets called Podium. Uh, and also forth, you know, it is the same one reality shaped differently. And we have to learn this truth, not only intellectually, but experientially. So that is uh, the purpose for which Sri Ramakrishna has taken human form amongst us. So, he has these two planes of existence. And that is the special word Bhava Mukha. I have not come across this world, uh, sorry, this word, in uh, any of the books of Vedanta. I have not seen this in any Upanishad or Bhagavad Gita. I have seen the word Bhava. Uh, I have not seen or read uh, or even commented upon this word Bhava Mukha. It is something that Sri Ramakrishna uh, specially used and Sri Ramakrishna heard this word from the Divine Mother. Mm. Uh, let us take a quick look at the history of this word when Sri Ramakrishna heard this word from Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna was just fired with that uh, uh, unusual divine madness to realize the truth. And realize the truth, experience the truth in various different ways. He did uh, what is commonly called sadhana. Uh, it's a beautiful word, sadhana means whatever is your goal, it comes with the three words, three uh, very closely connected Sanskrit words that sadhya, sadhaka and sadhana. Sadhya means the aspirant, oh, sorry, sadhaka means the aspirant. Sadhya is what that person is aspiring for and sadhana is that which links the two. It is like journey that I want to say, come to uh, Vedanta Society of New York from Providence. So I am taking up the journey and uh, the destination is the Vedanta Society of New York. And then uh, the journey connects me. Okay. So taking up that journey, spiritual life is also like a journey that yes, my identity that I experience, that I am this body, 
this mind and so forth. From that the journey has to actually begin uh, and then culminate in realizing this truth that I am the all-pervading, ever-free, ever-blissful, ever-perfect self. So this is, uh, this whole journey is called sadhana. So Sri Ramakrishna performed this sadhana in uh, multiple ways, in, uh, uh, from so many paths uh, he uh, take, took up this journey. Uh, like I could come here uh, by uh, a train, I can drive here by car, I can fly in here, or I can take a boat also. Uh, I can also do the bicycling uh, if I had enough strength. Uh, but uh, I mean all these different ways of travel are there. Sri Ramakrishna uh, took up this journey uh, in all these different ways many, many times. And then the culmination of that was uh, his uh, uh, practice of uh, the non-dual Vedanta under the tutelage of Totapuri. And then he merged in that state of Nirvikalpa Samadhi and all that uh, in a short time. And then, of course, uh, this continued Totapuri left the place after nine month long stay and all that. And then, you know, at the end of this sadhana, uh, Sri Ramakrishna merged in that state for six months. Uh, he was in that state for uh, about six months or so. He was not aware of uh, anything, his body, uh, he could not take food. Uh, he was just uh, merged in that bliss. So at that time it was said that a mendicant used to come somehow, he said Divine Mother uh, brought that fellow there uh, to beat his body and as soon as some awareness uh, would get sparked up, uh, he would push some food down his throat. So that is how his body survived. And uh, as uh, his awareness was of that level, of that type, which is even beyond our imagination. So there he heard this uh, Divine Mother telling that be in Bhava Mukha. Be in Bhava Mukha. Three times he heard that Divine Mother telling him, Be in Bhava Mukha. And this word uh, has been so beautifully explained by Swami Saradananda uh, in that uh, uh, great biography, Sri Ramakrishna and his divine play, Sri Ramakrishna Leela Prasanga or the great master, uh, it is, uh, there he explains this idea uh, that what is this Bhava Mukha? Sri Ramakrishna is uh, seeing both. Uh, it is uh, both means that uh, like you become, you know, you are aware at Madame Tusha's museum that it is wax and it is also Picasso. Uh, to look at it is Picasso and actually the substance is wax. So it is, if you warm it up a little bit, that Picasso will be just wax, you see. So it is, so uh, it is all this world, all the names and forms, he was able to see them along with seeing the substance there. Uh, that these two planes were available to him equally. So this is a very unique stage where the teachership 
can be functional the teachership ordinary person cannot really teach uh, because ordinary person like uh, you know all we uh, we know only the names and forms we read no doubt about the uh, inner reality we are same there but it is not matter of our experience it is something that we read and at best intellectually understand and maybe if we are very evolved in meditation in meditation we may get a glimpse of it that's uh, about it but we really do not experience it and it is uh, the experience of it and again coming back uh, to the uh, plane of names and forms shri ramakrishna said that it is impossible for ordinary beings somehow or other one can realize one can experience that all these names and forms are stuffed with the same self that is the reality of all of them one can with uh, life long sadhana and through the grace of divine can realize this truth and get into this samadhi in the state of samadhi but then will not be able to come back from that state uh, because it is such an overwhelming experience uh, that uh, the ordinary nervous system cannot take it up it is that person will leave Uh, the body the body will drop off and uh, not that the person will leave even that f- uh, freedom i will leave is not there the body will drop off he says within 21 days so while uh, i was uh, telling this thing in providence uh, our providence devotees are somewhat mischievous you know uh, so Uh, after all like me so <laughs> it is uh, when i was telling uh, one lady uh, did you meditate today swami now i am afraid of meditating because if i enter you were telling yesterday if i meditate then i get into samadhi and then i will have to die in 21 days uh, that i don't want <laughs> yeah we are so much attached to the world that uh, we do not want we cannot even tolerate getting uh, uh, out of this this experience howsoever torturous it may be and uh, we may keep on complaining we may grind our teeth uh, so bad so painful oh lord why did you put me in this okay come out no and we don't want to come out there is that a story a humorous story of a minister uh, who was uh, uh, giving a regular sunday sermon and then he was t- telling about uh, that yes the divine presence in heaven uh, you all i am sure you want to go to heaven in the divine presence how many of you want to go to heaven and then uh, no hand was getting raised you know uh, you don't want to go to heaven he asked you don't want to go to heaven i am perplexed why nobody of you want to go to heaven then some one of them explained oh eventually we would like to uh, we thought that you were asking right now uh, uh, right now our thought is like uh, uh, after this uh, should i go to starbucks or some other place uh, so it is uh, that is where our awareness is tied down and uh, our normal human awareness is tied down by its a uh, very weak nervous system it is very weak nerves are you know very much like the electric wires mm. 
so uh, they can carry only certain amount of current it is like for a household uh, you build the wiring uh, like say 20 amperes uh, the capacity would be 20 amperes and so if more current passes there are the circuit breakers uh, they will trip so that the wiring doesn't melt your uh, other appliances will not get destroyed and so forth so only 20 amperes current is allowed our normal human uh, awareness is uh, tied with this nervous system which can take up only this much current uh, that this is the world I want to enjoy. I am this body and this is the world that I want to enjoy. So this kind of subject-object perception, uh, this is this uh, fractured consciousness that much only our nervous system can take the experience of no I, no world, no inside, no outside. Mm. It is too much, too much. We cannot, this body, this nervous system, this brain, cannot handle that, friends. And therefore, when one gets to that experience, uh, even to get to that experience is not feasible, not possible, unless we gradually train our nerves uh, even to get there. It is, uh, in a way, spiritual practice, therefore, is uh, learning. Uh, to uh, change the how our nervous system functions. Uh, it is, uh, uh, popularly it is called reversing the brain chemistry. It is, uh, our brain chemistry has to be reversed. Uh, that the normal tendency is I see something pleasant and the brain directs me to go and grab it. That is the common nervous system. Now it has to change. Uh, I may see something as pleasant. The first impulse now should be, don't go. Mm. The common impulse in ignorance is, go. But then a spiritual aspirant changes it. Don't go. Don't go. It is a trap. Uh, it's a trap. You know mice, you put traps, uh, you put a, a, something like uh, uh, some uh, butter and something for the mouse to come and get. So mm, it is, uh, the, in Providence we did like that, uh, that it is put a trap. And then uh, a mouse came and got in and uh, our volunteer, I said go kill that mouse. Uh, but they were volunteers, so kind-hearted, you know. Uh, so didn't want to kill. So the fellow was left outside in the garden. And then uh, came in again. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and we thought, never mind, we will put the trap again. But uh, the mouse didn't get into the trap because it has become wiser. Not only it saw the bait, it saw the trap as well. Do you see? Uh, we are not as wise as mice. Uh, we are stupid. We again and again get trapped uh, by the same trap. That is another problem, you know. It is. Uh, so, uh, our nerves have to be given this training that uh, when you see something pleasant, some names and forms, then they are traps. You will get caught in them. Uh, difficult to extract, uh, difficult to come back. So uh, this is a training that one has to be given. But ordinary person uh, gets this training and then starts feeling the joy inside, that how joyous the life becomes, the life of control. 
and then they there is no tendency also to go the things that earlier appeared to be pleasant now they do not even appear to be pleasant because you see the source of joy uh, within uh, it is a great transformation a big leap it is and then uh, you come to that stage where uh, this attraction has fallen off and they as it falls off this subject object awareness this wall uh, that this is subject that is object that wall gets shattered mm, imagine there is the distinction uh, between i and the world that goes away and you see that unified uh, i am using the words but this thing please remember this is something beyond words so try you know to feel uh, that which i am trying to indicate by my words uh, it is uh, something that is far beyond words so one gets to that awareness and there the bliss is so big unimaginably huge infinite infinite uh, in uh, certain upanishads the tri upanishad bredarane upanishad uh, they have at uh, you know uh, tried to give us an idea how much that bliss is uh, because we are you know conscious of all this measurements so uh somebody uh susan tried to think you know that uh, how big is it uh, is it more than the that joy that i get by playing my music is it more than how much is this i want to get it quantified i am scientific so uh, just saying that it is big that doesn't satisfy me i need to get an exact measure how big is it so there is a nice uh, uh, thought experiment made there in these upanishads come on uh, start for measuring you need a unit so let us begin with the biggest unit that you can imagine on earth so think of uh, a very able bodied uh, young person Uh, that young person has all the senses uh, fully active brain is fully active the mind is uh, all very healthy and such a person has been given this whole earth for enjoyment साधु सैत साधु युवाध्यायक आशिष्टो दड़िष्टो बलिष्ठ तस्म सर्वा पृथ्वी वित्त पूर्णा सैत दैट इज हाउ तैतरी उपनिषद डिक्लेर्स इट दैट इफ नाउ थिंक ऑफ द जॉय दैट दैट पर्सन वुड बी हैविंग दैट देर इज दिस होल अर्थ फुल ऑफ ऑल वेल्थ हैज बीन गिवन to this very able bodied person for enjoyment without any competition so imagine the joy of that person let us take it up as a unit mm. now 100 such then uh, imagine you know a one uh, that much is exhaust our Im- imagination uh, that first unit itself is too much now hundreds of that units then uh, you go to a higher plane now the unit has to be big now you cannot count in term like when you want to uh, c- count the here things on the earth like this you may use inches feet uh, miles as most but when you go to astronomy you have to uh, count in terms of light years you say so you have to take up a different unit so the 100 times was taken up as unit then again hundreds of that still uh, you know and that was being done for seven times 100 100 100 and still it says well the one uh, who has uh, uh, gone uh, beyond 
this limited awareness, the one who has realized the truth, has all of that already. Already has all of that. But then how much, how many much we have to keep on going? The sages, uh, with a twinkle in their eyes, they smile. Mm. Can you count uh, the worth of, uh, say, a real f one dollar by a hundred fake bills of dollars? Mm. How many fake bills will make a real dollar? No, it won't. It is, it is fake is fake. What we call joys and pleasures here are fake. Therefore, they in no time get converted into misery. And not only misery, a terrible bondage that we get caught in. And so, when you see the true bliss, now, Certainly, you do not want to get back in this world of names and forms where, where the sufferings get called as joys. Mm. You don't want to come back to that plane. It is. So, this is. Uh, therefore, the, such people cannot become teachers. Who can become teacher? Well, who has gone to that land and has come back. Not only that, uh, can take us there and come back. He can go there and come back. Go there and con come back. Uh, he has uh, a, a multiple entry visa in both, uh, on both sides. Uh, so that person can go as often as possible want, uh, as often as needed and come back. So that is a very, very special person. That is not a person, although the form is that of a person. It is a, just a unique thing. Uh, and there lies the teachership. Sri Ramakrishna is that teachership. He himself uh, used to tell one story uh, of the three friends passing near a wall. Mm, and uh, they were walking and they, from the other side of the wall they were listening to some um, wonderful sound of joyous celebrations, very nice music, dancing, ha, hu, and all that. So one of them thought that, well, let me just go and climb and see what is there beyond the wall. And uh, I'll tell you after I see. So somehow the fellow climbed the wall. And then, but the experience, what he saw was so astounding that he just uh, jumped on the other side. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, this second friend again did that same condition. The third also went up, saw, but then he also had this idea, let me jump. But he did not, because he thought, if I also fall, who will give the news uh, of such a joyous place to all these suffering people outside? So, climbs down and gives us the news. That is the incarnation of God. So, Sri Ramakrishna, uh, the highest among the incarnations. And these are this, this is the statement of uh, none other but then by Swami Vivekananda. Uh, the, this couplet has been written, who was known for tremendous scientific spirit and using the exact words. Exact words. Therefore, that uh, Hiram Maxim, an inventor, after listening to Swami Vivekananda, uh, he mentions in his autobiography that here uh, was the person who was uh, uh, speaking English like Webster. 
Mm, that it is. Webster was known for uh, the exact word, the exact uh, line. Uh, there is uh, a, a story not generally should not be told in congregation, but here it is an informal setting. So I will, uh, I will venture that uh, uh, one day his uh, wife. Uh, saw him um, hobnobbing with another woman and she said oh, you how could you do this I am surprised and he immediately said no no I am surprised, you are amazed. <laughs> so, it is, so the exact shade of the word, you know, that it is, uh, exact particular, so, Swami Vivekananda was known for using exact words. So, when he says, avatar varishtha, it is not uh, just an exaggeration that he was heaping praise on Sri Ramakrishna. Uh, it, he really meant that because, and he has explained it uh, in uh, that beautiful essay that has been uh, put by Swami Sardananda right in the beginning of this uh, great biography uh, that Hindu dharma uh, and Sri Ramakrishna. What is Hindu religion and Sri Ramakrishna? He says that, well, all those previous incarnations, they were great. They were great. But now, the paths that they have laid for us, they have been erased. They are no longer there. It is, uh, uh, you can think of it, you know, we uh, think, say, for example, Rama, great. And the name of Rama is capable of liberating. And that is, the power is still intact. But we do not have that faith anymore. Let us confess it. That faith uh, is not there. Why the faith is not there? Uh, we uh, that happened so many thousand years of ago, uh, uh, so many thousand years ago. We do not even know whether it happened or it didn't happen. Uh, most people think uh, that it was just a story uh, written by this. Uh, there was nothing like a historical character Rama, and uh, there is the, the, the ground for that doubt. Because uh, the, the, you have a thousand different Ramayanas, thousand different life stories of Ramayana, one does not tally with another. Mm, all different stories about Rama have been told. So which Rama is real? We have that doubt. And so, as story, it's very good. But as a practical help for leading our life, now that is gone. And this principle of God incarnating again and again for the time has been so beautifully expounded in, uh, the, in Bhagavad Gita, especially in all various scriptures of Hindus. But especially in Bhagavad Gita, you see a very detailed exposition of this idea that what is called Yuga Avatar, Sambhavami, Yuge Yuge, the same being uh, coming again and again. Uh, in Providence, I am uh, pretty much involved uh, that with uh, interfaith movements. So, uh, and uh, many of them, you know, are very good, very close friends. So one gentleman I had invited, he uh, was minister. Now he has uh, given up, and uh, but a very popular minister in one of the uh, evangelical churches. 
and uh, a very nice man, a uh, lot of uh, involvement in service work and all that, very nice. Uh, so I invited him to give a talk. So he came and then he told me, look, Swami, uh, be because in honor of you, since I am coming here, I also put uh, an orange shirt today. I said, wow, great, very good. Then he asked me, uh, what do you think of Jesus? I said, well, he was an incarnation of God. Do you really think so? Yes, of course, no doubt about it to me. Then he asked them, pointing to Sri Ramakrishna and others, that then why do you have these? Then I asked him, you see, yesterday you had, uh, uh, when I met you, not exactly yesterday, a few days back, uh, you were not in this orange shirt. You had put on a different shirt. You were uh, in some blue shirt, not in the orange shirt. The other day we met, you were in white shirt. Uh, now do I refuse to recognize you because you have changed the shirt? Shall I, what do, should I look for, you know, whether to look for the shirt or for the person? And don't you recognize that body is just a shirt? Now I will be dealing with you uh, as you are in this red shirt. So that very divine who came in the in the shirt of Jesus. He has now come in the shirt of Sri Ramakrishna. Any problem? It was too much for him to take, you know. <laughs> An evangelical minister, you know. Uh, so, but uh, he said, oh, I will have to give it a thought. Uh, he cannot find an argument to refute it, so that I will have to give it a thought. So this is what happens with the uh, age-old incarnations. We never know how they looked. Uh, Swami Vivekananda mentions that very famous uh, painting of the Last Supper of Jesus. Last Supper. Now it is shown in that that all the disciples are sitting uh, around the table there. It is a dining table because that is how uh, in West people eat. Uh, there is a dining table. But Jesus was not a Westerner. He was an Easterner. And in that, at least during those days, everybody squatted and ate. So, therefore, this is not really the picture of Jesus' Last Supper. It is what, it was modified to your taste. We see the images of Rama, Sita. Uh, when you have a Rajasthani, uh, that from Rajasthan they make that image, it looks one way. If they are made, they are made in Bengal, they look differently. Uh, in South India, they will be very different. Uh, then uh, uh, in uh, the, the countries like Cambodia and all, they look very different. Uh, when the American artists, they paint it, uh, the image of Sita, Sita looks very European, you know. So it is, <laughs> and it is quite natural, I mean. It is because we have no uh, idea how Sita actually looked. Uh, firstly, was there anybody like Sita? Uh, and then uh, how she looked, we don't know. So uh, it, our imagination takes over. With Sri Ramakrishna, you know how Sri Ramakrishna looked. He was for this age, so he made sure that he is photographed. Not only that, uh, that he did the worship of this very picture that you see here. It was worshipped by none other but by Sri Ramakrishna himself. There is that beautiful Bengali song, 
आपनी कोरीले आपनार पूजा आपनार स्तुति गान सो दिस इज यू डिड योर ओन वर्शिप यू रिसाइटेड मंत्राज एंड हिम्स फॉर योर सेल्फ इट इज ग्रेट यू नो it is uh, this is an incarnation uh, of god who can form a bond with the modern man uh, that we know that such a life did exist such a life was lived here and such a life although merged in god was full of so much compassion for everyone mm, it is that is the greatness that in spite of uh, tasting the great bliss uh, in the realm beyond name and form he could still come at our level he once was describing just feel uh, the, the contrast with uh, us that he said the natural uh, propensity of this mind pointing is pointing to himself is to merge in that divine bliss somehow or other uh, i have to pull this mind down uh, at this level of name and form see uh, when you meditate when we meditate what happens it is exactly reverse uh, even while meditating even if uh, we are uh, adept in meditation even if we have been meditating for uh, decades still it is uh not free from struggle uh, somehow we have to glue the mind with god uh, oh let me concentrate on that form of god that guru has given me and follow these instructions of the guru and so forth that's the struggle the mind is automatically going into you know all the other directions what my son might be doing now uh, and what is the movie going on in that theater today and how the football uh, that super bowl is going to which side uh, it will win and so forth you know it is all that goes on in the mind so uh, that is why we if we who come to shri ram krishna uh, yesterday i was telling uh, the devotees uh, a group led by our ratan uh, that yes if we tie ourselves to shri ram krishna then and follow in sanskrit there is a beautiful word for that anusaran mm, that uh, you follow uh that person so that where that person leads uh, gets i also get there so that is the idea of following uh when uh, uh, initially you know when i came here there was no gps and all that was not very popular not known so i wanted to go somewhere so that lady told okay saw me you drive your car behind me you know just follow me i will be leading you you follow now if i am following in the right way and she was very intelligent she made sure that if uh, the traffic light separates us she would uh, put uh, the, the car to the side till i came so uh, so the end result is where uh, she went i also reached there so now where shri ram krishna reaches are we not sure to reach there is there any doubt no. absolutely no doubt it is that is bhav mukha that he is go coming and going in and out he is acting on the stage as it were without when you act a person acts on the stage uh, maybe acting uh, like say uh, hamlet 
uh, but uh, knows that I am John Smith, I am not Hamlet. Uh, and ultimately, I will not be committing suicide, actually. <laughs> uh, I will be going back home uh, with a lot of accolades for wonderful acting. So, uh, that is how, even though... Uh, while the performance is uh, going on, some if somebody calls him, Hey John, how are you doing? He won't answer. Because now on the stage, I am Hamlet, I am not John Smith. So, exactly like that, amongst us, Sri Ramakrishna lived like us. He ate like us, walked like us, suffered like us. Just think of it. Uh, he had all the diseases more than normally people have. Uh, all those things he had. And so, uh, he was like us. Uh, because when you act, you know, uh, acting is always a little over uh, to, uh, to have that impact. And it is actually, you don't see anybody singing uh, in grief. Uh, if somebody is grief struck, automatically there is no singing. So it is only the joy that makes you really sing. And uh, so one Swami was saying, in the joy one sings, in the Taitiri Upanishad again, that thing comes that uh, in realizing this joy, they started singing. So it is, uh, uh, then one of us told that Swami, no, no, we have seen people, uh, Singing in grief. Eh? Where did you see? In the movies. Eh, that happens only in movies, you see. <laughs> Not really. And it is in the, uh, because you want to create uh, a, uh, an extra impact on them. So, uh, Sri Ramakrishna, since he was acting, he cried more than normally a person would cry. Mm, he showed suffering more than normally a person would uh, show. There is that beautiful, very illustrative incident of his uh, arm getting broken. Mm, think of that. What a uh, great lesson that thing has. That uh, he fell on the railing, broke the hand and was... Uh, showing to everybody, uh, showing to doctor, uh, so much pain, do something about it, so much of pain. Uh, and then one of the devotees said, you are in no pain at all. And Sri Ramakrishna explained, hey, this fellow caught me. <laughs> so it is like this, that uh, he is uh, seeing the other side. Uh, and he is also seeing this side, both, uh, and can go and come uh, as frequently as needed to guide us, uh, to guide us, so that we also could go there. It is tremendous compassion, friends, tremendous compassion. Uh, the one who can just remain in the that uh, bliss, for us comes down to this plane uh, so that can take us also in that bliss. Friends, I have spoken a lot uh, and uh, generally I keep speaking for 40-45 minutes. I don't end before that so that uh, those who are sitting can have some good sleep, you know. They wouldn't be woken up in between. So. Mm, it is. So now that I think uh, the sleep must be over by now. Uh, and uh, uh, so I suggest that please read again uh, that beautiful chapter from Leela Prasanga, Sri Ramakrishna and his divine play or the older translation, uh, whatever you have. Uh, it is uh, very important to feel the teachership of Sri Ramakrishna by looking at this, by understanding this. And that is why Swami Sardananda actually began the book by writing about this Sri Ramakrishna and in Bhava Mukha. So, 
uh, I conclude my salutations again to Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Swami Vivekananda, and my heartfelt thanks to you all for giving me a patient hearing and of course for the wonderful hospitality.